Facebook. Put my face on the books. And my book on the faces. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's, all, right. it's all I've got. Are you ready? It's hot. Are you, are you ready, CZ? Are you ready? And... No! Ah! <laughs> What if that was the whole show? And then we just turn it off immediately. That's it. Well, welcome back to the rambles. We're screaming. That's pretty much all I have in my script. That's it. <laughs> just had the letter Scream A repeated eternally. 14 times. Uh, and then a bunch of exclamation points. Hey, everyone. Hello. All four to six of you, approximately. Oh, uh, yeah. Two of which might be the people in the room watching us. It's the rambles. The tabletop rambles. We're back. Unexplainably, we're here. Uh, you can't stop us illegally. You can't make us not do this. So we're going to do it. So from deal with it. From our hidden location. You don't know where we are. We're in a basement somewhere. <laughs> We're on the main floor. Yeah, it, it, it does kind of have a basement a vibe right there. with the with the banner behind yeah. it. Yeah. That had a big waifu wall scroll yeah. over here, maybe. <laughs> I'll add one in. Yeah, waifu scroll. <laughs> <laughs> Next episode is just going to be waifu wall scrolls all the way across. So yeah. we haven't uh, done a show in a while. No, we. This have is not. uh, this is it's cool. I'm definitely throwing it to you while I double check things are working well. While you start to figure out what we're doing, yeah, we haven't done a show in a while because life has exploded, like literally. Yes. Exploded. <laughs> it's been very, very uh, eventful. Six months, two years, five years, twelve years, decade. Uh, de ten years. How long since the for millions of years, of millions of years, possibly even thousands of years. Since the dawn of time. Uh, sorry, that's a nice in joke that nobody's going to get except me and one other person. Oh, I hope they're watching. I hope they're one of the seven people watching and they, yeah. and they chuckled. We're up to seven. Out. That's pretty good. That's right now, that's good. an all time high. So, uh, this sh let's explain the rambles. It's a little different now because it's not just it here's good. Home Shopping Network brought to you. <laughs> it's um, not subliminal, not so subliminal. It was nothing subliminal. To we come buy a gigabytes. Literally I putting mean, a package still, in front still of go, you. Still go shop at gigabytes. I mean, God. Yes. You should do that. I'm still, I'm still wrecking. Oh, you're also wrecking. Yeah, I am in Mamrietta, Georgia. Yeah, Mam <laughs> the Mamrietta shirt. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, so we, besides that, we're also going to talk about like industry stuff and things. Not just not just here's some products, here's what's new. But why are why are they new? How how are they why feeling? Why are they here? <laughs> this is not scripted. <laughs> um, rarely are they asked. Are the products learning? We re we really. We <laughs> We really need some like uh, viewer participation here today. I think. Yeah. Well, uh, I w we'll see. We'll see. I'm gonna have to load the comments up on my phone because Facebook is frozen on the laptop. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> I can get some for you. Oh, good. Okay. So, so John might have to moderate if you can give us some comments. He'll. Yeah, he'll Calvin read. says, and then there were nerds. Yes. Justin says, welcome back. Oh, good. Good. Calvin says, waifu wall scrolls. We just call that the daughters of Cain battle tome, right? Oh, get out of here. Get out of here. With that. <laughs> get, no, none of that. Uh, uh, Nurgle uh, waifus for life. It's I, real gross. I don't get that reference anymore. I, I hate daughters. I'm, I'm, way, I'm, way, I'm way too separated from. It's like a third level of... meme joke for me, so yeah. it's not. Sorry. <laughs> so, no. anyway, yeah, what we got going on, Zach? So, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, w multiple things. I'm trying yeah. to. Let me organize the things for everyone. First, we had some new stuff that I did want to talk about that I'm excited about. Because yeah. uh, I think I'm one of five people really excited about the Batman Miniatures game. <laughs> Oh, there's like six. Uh, and I want to get more people excited about it because it's a really cool game that I think just no one is looking at because you've got a lot of miniature skirmish games with a lot of releases right now and it kind of gets buried yeah, under Yeah, and all you're looking at because stores are really tired because distribution has been terrible for a long Di time. It is uh, difficult to <laughs> get these products. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, as we have discovered being on the distributor side, but you can mm. buy them at Gigabytes. Yep, and if you're a retail store, you can buy them at Bridge. Yes, and they're, they're really just right there. And they're significantly easier to get them oh, through oh, us oh. than anyone else. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm just going to hold up. I'll do and, yeah, assistance. thank you, Vanna. So uh, what's also cool about this is if you buy them from us, I personally go in and write the little biography of every single character in here. Uh, I really, really do. Go to look at the listings of all the Batman Oh, stuff. really? Yeah, I have nice. a good time with them. So the Batman stuff is really cool. If you're a skirmish gamer, uh, real fast, one of the, the things that I like about this game is that you don't necessarily show up and play like a battle plan that's set by the game starting. You show up and you've got your Mr. Freeze gang and you have a set of cards and things like that. So, yeah, thank you. So, when you show up, you have like objectives that you want to complete on the battlefield. Like, you want to have X amount of people frozen, X amount of markers on the table, be in control of a certain area. And your opponent does as well, but like you set your own win conditions. So, you're kind of showing up playing 
towards what you want to do as your gang, and they're doing is what they want to do. So that's how they kind of make sense of how cool. it is. Asymmetrical. Um, and it's... it makes sense because when you have like the <laughs> you penguin... have to work on that word. <laughs> asymmetrical. I it's it's asymmetrical. <laughs> Um, but it's cool because obviously Mr. Freeze could probably fight the penguin pretty easily and defeat him, but that's not really how they work. As Bane, you don't just win by punching everybody. You have to, like, be strategy to it. So it helps. My question with this game was always, how do you possibly rectify, like, the Scarecrow versus, I don't know, a Justice League member? Because <laughs> one of them is just a spooky guy with gas. So this this helps do it because you're not just slugging And the other out. is the Scarecrow. And the other is the Scarecrow. <laughs> Uh, that Martian Superman, Superman man. loves his burritos. <laughs> he does. It's devastating. <laughs> I think that's an episode of The Boys, actually. <laughs> Possibly. Possibly so. So, yeah, uh, if you are interested in this, I'm going to get the... We have the demo set. Uh, I am about 80% done painting it for the store, mm -hmm. and we'll have it up there, and I'm going to do some demos at some point because I think it's a really cool game. Yep. I want to get people into it. And Bridge did, did just receive a pretty... <laughs> receive a pretty substantial restock uh, at distribution of pretty much the entire range. Yeah. It's... And when I say this was painful to get, it was painful. So painful. So painful. Uh, I placed this order on August 1st. To come mm -hmm. from Spain because you know you can't get in the US, uh, which is something that needs to be rectified. <clears throat> Just saying, we do fulfillment. Uh, and it took what is it now? Six weeks. It took six, six weeks. Yeah, it six took... weeks to go across the ocean. I mean, I can swim faster than that. It's true. And I you... have little legs. I so like. I rode know. my boat all the way till the end of the world and decided to swim back and fight well, some I orcs. I can ride my bike so, with no handlebars. I'll listen to this guy now. So anyway, yeah, we have it at Bridge. We have it at Gigabytes. It's, uh, we're trying to keep it in stock, keep the game growing, uh, fix the distribution for it, which is going to be an ongoing thing as I point out many things here of fixing the distribution yes. challenge. Distribution is broken in America. It, oh, no. Smash it over. So it was that game. So it is. But yeah, <laughs> so check it out because um, it's really cool. Also, it's a really, really good app for building the, the game, and all the rules are on the app. It's beautiful. It's well done. It's nice. miles better. I than mean, the models are incredible. I mean, Night Model is like... Like all European and mainly Spanish companies make these amazing figures, like Infinity Night models. Like these are these models. I have spent so much time painting my one scarecrow that I got, uh, and it, these models will make you be a better painter, or you will realize you're not a good painter. Like paint there's the no middle ground with these. Paint things. the scarecrow so well, the crows don't fly away. They're like going up to it. They're going, drawn oh, wow. to it. Yeah, they're drawn to it. Yeah. Good. Good. Yes, Andy. Yeah. So, all right. <laughs> I'm trying. Uh, I'm trying. Oh, okay. I, well, I put Azazel out here. Azrael. Azazel? That's a different AZ fantasy character name probably from something. I put Azrael out here only because oh. I wanted to point out I, I would like to challenge anyone who thinks you're a really good model painter. Uh, here you go. 15 shades of white and blue. Go go for it. Like yeah. I, w I want to see this guy done really well because it won't be from me. Uh, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Yeah. I can't just like paint him white and then leave him for 20 years so the white like... Yeah. Just base coat him yeah. and then leave him outside. Yeah. The gamer way. <laughs> That's how I'll do it. All right, so uh, what else is new and exciting before we start talking about how shipping is <laughs> fun and exciting yes. constantly? Uh, let's see what else we got. We got some Boba games. <gasps> Look at these. Oh! These actually just Boba. This is a sample. Listen up, y'all. So it's a Boba Taj. Sub <laughs> no. That's my roller coaster song. If anyone goes to the Rocket Roller Coaster in Universal, I always listen to Sabotage. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, yeah, so Sabotage <laughs> is a, I think it's a party game, right? It's like two to five players or something it is. like that? It is a party game. Um, sure it says it here. Hey, two to five. I was correct. No idea. Uh, <laughs> and uh, God, that's so bad. I'd and show Bumble you what Facebook, is a, is a Facebook one -on -one is just completely play. giving yeah, me an error yeah. message. <laughs> so uh, there seems to be a, 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 an increase in Boba Tea related gaming. So this one is uh, from the Boba ga Boba Card Game Company. Mm -hmm. uh, so super great. Like originally before we had a bridge, it was selling solely on Amazon. It sells like a hundred thousand units a year or something like that. So pretty incredible. Uh, so we're really excited to have it here and promote it. And then Boba Majong is actually a Gigamech product that we're bringing in, and this is done by Sunrise uh, Tornado. Tornado. Yeah, yes. great company name. Uh, with Tate Wu, who makes absolutely incredible. Like if you played Katsudoku, if you played um, what's that other game? They're all based on like, like uh, the other game you mean Chinese games? Boba Mahjong? No, like oh, Macaroon. And, uh, I was trying to save you there. <laughs> I don't know. There's a bunch of them. I don't know, there's a bunch of them. He does good games. 
So anyway, we're publishing this one. This is a twelve dollar price point because it's like a little card size thing. Yeah. Pretty incredible. This one is thirty dollars. Oh yeah, you got it. You got him there. There you go. Oh, John, 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 is, John is live in my TikToks. We're, t- we're, t- um, we're two types of. So pretty cool. Right like now. I mean, it's just another another kind of image of what how the industry is changing because more more of these nice colorful party games are coming in, um, kind of like getting away from the the huge like hundred dollars ish. It, it, it feels like <laughs> it feels like the industry is is dividing. Where it's now here's your three hundred and fifty dollar all in Kickstarter bonanza package, and then here's your fifteen dollar like fun yeah. kind of silly card yeah. game thing. And it's like th- you're either gonna be that kind of gamer, you know, you're either the party gamer where you show up and you put down a couple of games uh, cards, and your friends are like yay, or you show up and you have an entire twelve hour game spread up, and your friends are like I don't want to be yeah. friends with you anymore. Wow. You tricked I, me. I don't have time for that anymore. Yeah, we don't have to be locked in together anymore. That, that, was, that, was, <laughs> right. that was two years ago. I can just go no, outside actually. now. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> don't just pollen out there. It's terrible. It is. Yeah. Also, the sun <laughs> it's still out there, it's still bright. I don't know why we're not doing something about that. All right. What are our billionaires doing if not building a giant dome around the Earth so I don't get sunburned? I thought that was the whole point of the rocket ship is space. I thought so too. Yeah. In the plot of the Simpsons movie. Whatever. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so Saboba 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 Mashong Taj. <laughs> That's all of the games put together. Uh, pretty cool, and check them out. They're little fun, silly games. Uh, like, and another fun, easy to play game. Hey. It's hidden behind your giant bolt action box. I really want to show off the giant bolt action box. Uh, I'm very proud that's why I'm letting it for last. Uh, yeah, this one just arrived. This is if you've played Orchard. Orchard is a nine card solitaire game that uh, has actually been incredible. I think we're waiting the fifth reprint. Right now, another Gigamech game. It just constantly. Uh, this one also is a nine card solitaire game, but it's the sequel to Orchard. It's called Grove. And the next one would probably be like, you know, what's, what's bigger than a Grove? Forest? Forest? I guess. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, so this is a nine card. Uh, you're the citrusy sequel to the award winning Orchard. Uh, features new elements, glades, these open spaces without trees. There's a new way to collect fruit, and then there's also a little squirrel that does stuff. Does a squirrel meeple. That's yeah, what you there's came a little, there's, for. There's, you came for the squirrel meeple who, I guess, steals your fruit. Yes, like yeah. real squirrels. Yeah. Constantly have a or, problem. Or, or nuts, I guess. Uh, but yeah, we just got this in. First print run. New release. Uh, it's available. Lots of retail stores have already picked it up. Uh, I want to say... Is that 10000 That's a lot for that game. <laughs> uh, I would pay maybe 20 bucks, but 10000 like seems reasonable. Three and a half at least are gone so uh pretty good start to it uh you know if you don't want to buy a gigabytes which i don't know why you don't want to buy a gigabytes you can buy it on amazon what who so, wouldn't want to buy a gigabytes but you should buy a gigabytes <clears throat> or your friendly local game store and have them carry it yeah, yeah. Uh, I just, online.com. there you go i just right, want to comment you, uh justin has said the game with a workable app is heresy uh actually no i don't think heresy has a workable app okay. Well, that would like be funnier if I didn't stutter. Uh, they, on the back of each of the Grove cards is like special objectives you can play. Ah. Super cool. Yeah, yeah, John, John, John has actually played randomly. games. Yeah. <laughs> John, Jen, John plays games. Jen has a good point. <laughs> uh, when you have friends who are coming over, ask what games they like. Yeah, don't don't be that person. Don't uh, Listen, Stars of Akarios looks really awesome, but if I'm not prepared for that and I show up for dinner at your house... Yeah, this one time, like, I mean, <laughs> please don't. I never asked, and, like, these people just came up wearing leather and stuff, and I was like, oh... Game we playing? Oh, that's a different type of Dungeons and Dragons. You were. You One were. of them had this cube. Is this a Cenobite <laughs> reference? Are we are we raising hells here? I could. I, I could don't say know where this a, is going. To be honest, I could say it's a Cabin in the Woods reference. Oh, okay, yeah, all right. Well, yeah, yeah, you go play board games in the Cabin in the Woods. Oh, that's, that's my favorite. Movie. Was there ever a Cabin in the Woods game? God, that'd be great, wouldn't it? It's a, it seems like there. If we weren't so bad at Kickstarters, we should do it. <laughs> we <laughs> are bad at Kickstarters. Yes, yeah, thank you. Yeah, you could have like all the little cubes. You could have the storage thing be the cube storage, and you could take the minis That's out. Pretty much That's the something. trail of House on the Hill. You go to the cabin, yeah, and then you, depending on what book thing you read, that releases the monster. But I like, I like yes, Cabin you in the res- Woods. You could, res- you could reskin Betrayal. <laughs> yeah, I guess and at that point you've just got Betrayal in the. I mean, everything is a copy of something, right? Not in the Look woods. You, you're pretty much a copy of me. That's true. We're the same. Fell out of the bat. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, so uh, no, I'm no looking for the, whatsoever. I'm looking for the comments and things like that. But yes, please practice uh, safe board gaming, or safe board gaming. Do not just surprise people. Boy, it is just well, we're still live, so that's yeah. good. The, our Facebook on the laptop is just completely crapped out at this point. Ah, it's all right. It so let's talk about bolt action. Ooh, so I love bolt action. I love warlord games. This is bolt action. Nice. This is bolt action. This, this is, is bolt new, action. This is their new campaigny two player starter thingy. Yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> I'm very precise. Uh, yeah, no, another thing that we just got in at Bridge, and it's, we've always carried the entire range of Gigabytes, right? We've carried Bolt Action, Black Powder, uh, Black Seas, Victory Seas, whatever else they bring out. Bolt Action has a lot of Warlord. I keep saying Bolt Warlord has a lot of games. Yeah. And now at Bridge, we finally start carrying uh, the range. So as soon as we inventory the, the, the incredible painful mess of stuff that has arrived in i mean it's just a lot that's what i'm doing uh, <laughs> after this show <laughs> we we will have this available and hopefully have more uh quickly more quickly shipping in the u.s i, I can't think of the right way to say it but anyway yeah i love bold action i'm a big world war ii fanatic uh i'm actually designing a game right now that is based on world war ii actually so is matt mckean i believe designing a yeah, game based yeah. on world war ii we're all based on the game world war ii mine's going to back oh uh, yeah, so super, super cool. This is, this is great for the people watching on the uh, the webcam because... I'm a big historical fan. You. you know, like, historicals are really... I don't know, Gigabytes, there's, there's a huge historical. I mean, we do, like, twice a year, we do a big, like, event, and people come out. And I've always loved Warlord, you know, 28 mil, great figures, uh, you know. Yeah, and they're not... It's not a uh, really expensive way to get into historical gaming to go through Warlord. No, I mean, this is, like, 50 bucks, 60 bucks, I think. No, it's probably more. I don't know. Well, I know that one of the challenges... I know the starter sets are 112 for, like, an army starter. And that's basically what you need at that point, which is nice because yeah. I think miniature gaming is... it's Sometimes the price tag on that is what scares people away from it. What? Uh, because it's uh, it's a lot... It's it's a weird concept. I was trying to explain this to my, my dad who's in his 70s, that I spend more money than pre-assembled painted toys, and then I get the joy of building them, painting them, Painting them again because it sucked the first time. Hobby, sir. And then I get to go so, lose a game with them. That's how they get you. That yeah. Hobby. Yeah. I mean, it's I feel like the price. Stuff. I feel like pricing is coming back down a little bit though. Like when you consider um, the new uh, leagues of Voltan, it's only two hundred dollars for that army box. That's insane. That's great. I almost great. just what? hit pre-order immediately. Yeah, we have a hundred. Like, we have a hundred of them coming in. What do you? Wait, how many do we you have? can't hit pre-order till Saturday. So I know that's why I couldn't. I always get it. hit pre-order immediately, except I can't. I saw uh, I saw the number on the sheet. I yeah. was like, I want one. Yeah, he's right in my face. I think he wants me to say a hundred. And tell us like 100? the amounts that we could get for Games Workshop stuff. What do you mean? Like the amounts, like hundred of a pre-order of League of Votan. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I think I said, like someone was worried, so I said, don't worry, it's gonna last a day or two because we got a hundred. And then it won't last past that day or two. <laughs> yeah, I'd say, I'd say two to three days. Yeah, A yeah. week would... I'd be surprised yeah. to see I'm interested. I'm interested. The second we click live on that thing, so like, I guess probably 12.01 Saturday morning, I'll, I'll make sure I'm awake and just be like, publish listing. And it goes live and then I'll just watch the guys come in. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. 12.01 Saturday. I'll show you how to automate that. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you don't no, actually have no, to be no, up no. at midnight. I mean, I do all the best of my work at 2 a.m. I just played Counter Strike. So, are you Mostly. are you gonna paint up some uh, squats? You gonna play some? Oh God, no! Squat, no. <laughs> I like them. I, 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 don't, a, I don't. I don't. I've seen people more. getting upset because they're not as grim dark as the rest of the lines can be. But then again, orcs and squigs exist, so I don't know what that argument's about really. But I, I think the Voltan look cool. They've got little weird like moon buggy suits on. Yeah. They have big goofy helmets. They remind me of the. Uh, Original Space Marine from Starcraft, Starcraft with a giant dome yeah. helmet. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm okay with that. Cool. Like, camera one, camera two. I'm okay with that. I, I say, give me more you, legion, you, you, legions of Voltan, leagues, leagues, leagues of Voltan. Yeah, it's a league. Like you know, there's, 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 yeah, no, they're like they're like a league. It's like what they used to call like medieval Italians. Yeah, there, there was a league of countries. It's not like a league of extraordinary gentlemen. I think they could witches. join and leave as they wanted. Sure, we're, we're hey, you joined us for history. And that's I, what you uh, need here. I don't know. <laughs> I was reaching back into my Age of Empires too because I remember when you play as Barbarossa, you have to invade Lombardy. Oh boy, I, I don't know that's, anything about it's going, that. It's going back there. It's like the first campaign in there, right? Yeah. That's how I uh, learned that he he uh, basically drowned himself because he was so thirsty. Uh, he ran into a river to swim, but he kept, he didn't take off his armor, so he drowned. Smart. <laughs> and then, smart. So they, also, so they pickled him in a barrel to to make sure he got to Damascus. His yeah. promise was I'm going to Damascus, so they put him in the bar and pickled him and brought him there. What promise fulfilled? Did they then just like un, un cork the barrel and they're like, "Hey, pickled guy." <laughs> that seems weird. <laughs> Who ordered this? Refused uh, delivery on it. Uh, I don't know. I was like 14 when I read that. I thought it was one of the coolest things I'd ever read. <laughs> so we have leagues. Are we got to sell us busted squats? Yeah, they look like they do squats. Yeah, 
There's some thick boys there. Don't be, you know. That's what he means, right? It's not GW. No, it's can't spell against Rockshop but oh, Power Creep. That's very true. <laughs> I actually, are, are they, this is a legit question for 40k people. Are, is there a, a Power Creep with this? I tried to read one of the weapon descriptions and it was like, the weapon description is the value of the weapon description if the value is the same as the weapon. It was a really confused. You guys know what I'm talking about. It was on one of the things. And it was really confusing. One of your lawyers played this game. It, it was. It got to the level of jargon where I was like, I don't know what this does. Like, I can't even. Am I shooting a law book at a guy? Maybe. Listen, they like, gotta be doing something right. The game is more popular than ever. So I mean, because the models look amazing. I mean, the models do look amazing. And the world's amazing. I haven't. Yeah, I haven't actually played it, but I'm still buying and painting them <laughs> because the models look cool. That's why. I have not fought or fought a marine in a while. Actually, I probably have to start catching up. You gotta start. Nor buying. have I built one, nor have I painted one. You need to go ahead and buy and build an army that you can then sell in a couple of years. Yeah. You know, get back on that. Still got one I need to sell. Oh. Ooh. I would say something like link in description below, but I. <laughs> we've all seen what Facebook but, has decided to do this morning. Technology. Technology. Yeah. It's the ongoing thing. Whenever I'm watching uh, streams, is that the Facebook breaks? Then you can pay it to Facebook. Yeah, and what's weird is we tested this roughly 30 minutes beforehand, and it worked perfectly fine. That was the, the first test. The entire time. Just, just, I did walk in. Just, just like that's that, what it just was. Just like how we do most of our work. That was our first test. Yeah. <laughs> and then we publish it. Wait, no. Aww. Aww. So let's talk about uh, like the, the shipping stuff, the, the fulfillment, like the back end of this thing. The people watching that are just going to gigabytes may not realize. But when you're going in and wondering, like, where is my stuff? Why is it now? Why is every board game now $20 more than it was oh, a year yeah. ago? That kind of yeah. thing. And, and is it going to come back down? Or is this like most other industries where they've realized, well, shoot, we can charge them six bucks for bread. We'll just keep it right there. That one. Oh, it's that, that one. Okay, well, that hey, one. there's yeah, America. Question answer. Yeah, pretty much so. Uh, the freight crisis is over-ish. Uh, there's more freight than ever moving. I mean, we were getting two containers here. And it was due to port congestion. I think it was a week late. So they're down for a week from like four weeks. But that's releasing next week. Yeah. Uh, I mean, container prices, we just got quotes for a container that was like 12, 13,000. I think it was like 10. No, 10 was a 20 footer. I think it was 13,000 for a 40 footer, which last year it would have been double that. It would have been 26,000. Wow. I remember booking a, a, a container for 26,000 actually uh, for a customer. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and even a few months half. ago it was like 16,000. So the prices are dropping. Are they ever going to go back to where they were? No. No. Because you used to be able to get a container for like four or five thousand and i don't see how people make money on that like well and it's it's just once again if they know that they can stretch the price yeah to a certain i mean point, like it's easy we'll to keep it like there. the the rule is you can raise prices uh and unless there's extra extraneous circumstances they're never going back down right like you can if you lower a price you can never raise it or conversely if you raise a price typically you're never going to lower it uh, unless something happens so if some new shipping company suddenly rises from nowhere and starts doing sheep chipping and you know they find a new source of gasoline and, and stuff like that or you know maybe countries stop invading each other and that'd be nice stuff like yeah. that you know it's it's but a lot of the prices now like yes there's all those, those <coughs> factors like inflation and stuff a lot of it's just you got used to it <laughs> why why would i lower that price that's i think you that's know? the biggest thing but is. the problem is for years and years and years you had you had prices that were uh, falsely pre pressured down, right? Like, yeah, you're kind of hitting the real, you're not the real, but you're getting closer to a real price. Like, mm -hmm. you know, this could have been like eight dollars a few years ago, and companies would make it and they'd be like, oh, I'm making ten cents on this. But you actually have to like consider the price, consider the shipping. You know, this is going to cost probably a dollar a unit to ship mm -hmm. to the states. So that that feeds in. And you're already paying for the manufacturer and the shipping, the licensing fee, uh, you know, and then you have to factor in the taxes and the shipping too, and down to like, if you buy this for me at twelve dollars, I lose like two percent to a merchant processor. Yep. So like, right all, that has to, all that has credit to be, card. all that has to be factored into the into the price of a game. Well, and talking about game design stuff, we've learned from consulting and helping with Kickstarters. Like, mm -hmm. you kind of have to do a lot of that up front. Because yeah. if you're going to set a target for a Kickstarter, for instance, yeah. and this is what I've seen in talking with people, is they set the goal, and it's exactly what they need to print the game and make a certain amount of profit. Yeah. But then they don't counter in Bats. anything that you, Bats that's the crazy you just one. said. That's the crazy one. When you have people that are like, I'm going to ship to you, and this game's $40. You're like, that's cool. 
plus five. And they're like, no, twelve five. I'm like, plus five, because mm-hmm. <laughs> that's twenty percent in your. And a, a lot of people just aren't knowledgeable. They don't. They don't. So like, we had a Kickstarter, just failed, right? Very meh about it. It's over uh, there. <laughs> very meh about the failure, to be honest. If I'm, if I'm being honest, uh, for various reasons. But one of the reasons I think it failed is like we did. We set a pretty high. Um, like price on it, mm-hmm. and I think we did cut that price down a bit. We did, but even at that, it's kind of like, um, the price we had set was like twenty five thousand, and that was all right. Well, you print it, you're gonna cover it, you're gonna cover your shipments, your payments, you're gonna pay for everything, and if you don't pay for everything and you don't hit that point, then there's not, there's no point doing it, right? Right, because there's no place for ego anymore, and I think that's that's the big thing. Like, yes, price is a factor. But a big thing with the last few years is it's crushed egos and it made people more realistic, right? Uh, you know, this game says fifty dollars, but should it be fifty dollars? Maybe it should be eighty dollars because that's the cost of the components and the value of the goods and what it should be. And it's just the reality. Like if you want to actually survive and be a real company in the industry rather than just some dude who's making a game and for funsies mm-hmm. <laughs> and then wondering why his game's not selling, you know, down to the fact that you want to send to reviewers. I mean, with our first few games, when we made them, and we learned, we never factored in shipping to reviewers. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, that's every reviewer. You're <coughs> sending a game, you're sending the shipping, it costs you 50 bucks. Well, and if you've got a game like yeah. we just had with ours, you have to make a demo copy mm-hmm. to send out because you don't actually have a physical thing for a game reviewer to and play. Those, so those are expensive. You've, yeah, you've got the cost of that. So if you're doing this just as a, someone in your basement basically making this, there's a lot to think about yeah. on top of just, I have an idea, put it on Kickstarter and raise some money. Because what you don't want to do is end up where well, I've got the money, I, the Kickstarter was successful, but it wasn't enough money to actually make the yeah, game. Yeah, and also you forget, like, yeah, sure, say you have 25,000 gold on Kickstarter, well, you immediately lose 10% of that because yeah. Kickstarter's taking that. And if you say you use backer kit, that's like another 8% or something mm-hmm. like that. Or Kickstarter's 5 maybe, and backer kit is 8 so It's like 15%. You lose about 15%. So, like, I mean, that's 15, so you lose over 3 grand off the top. So now you're down to 22K. <laughs> Did you factor that in? Probably not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> And then so, you got your cancellations and your refunds and your damage copies and there's a lot. So to answer the question, no, prices are not going back down. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> right, well, for the first time, welcome to the rambles because that's just what happened. That's kind of the, the two um, questions, 40 minutes. Yeah. And uh, the, the second question of that is, should price go back down? Mm, a bit, I guess. I think it depends on, I mean, if the if the industry can sustain prices at this level. If the industry can sustain wargaming prices being two, three hundred bucks for a person to play, or board games being, like, like we get, said, you get a lot of time. I mean, I think for a long time, uh, due to due to the industry being heavily hobbyist, right? You know, that's a big thing with the industry is everyone's a hobbyist. It invited a lot of people who are hobbyists, and they don't really understand. And, but, you know, we had someone tell, I don't want to, I have a lot of people who follow me, and I don't want to, Pushed in them because I don't want to seem like I'm I'm being a shill. I was like, well, yeah, you're a business, you're a shill. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> this is fun. It's also going to shill. We do have products product. in front of us to talk um, about that we would like, like to purchase. You know, so I don't want to. I, I don't want to raise the price because I don't want to. I don't want people. It's like your game. If your game is a fifty dollar game, charge fifty dollars for it. Yeah. Don't say you're only charge forty so you can please your backers because they ain't putting bread on the table. Right, <laughs> gamers' values will be whatever their value center is. You can't, you can't it's, say, "Oh, this been, game is it's too been expensive." Made on, it's been made on realistic. Like you look at a game, and we we published one, and it was sold on Kickstarter for sixty dollars. And the second we publish it, we look at it, like, this is a hundred dollar game all day long, and you know it has never hesitated to sell a hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Never, ever, ever, ever. Yeah, games will have a, a good value on them. I mean, shoot, I'll spend thirty bucks on one tiny plastic dude that yeah, I need. Yeah, so you, well, so the thing is, people are unrealistic, right? And, like, and the second you sit down and explain to them, like, how much is it going to cost to go to the movies and get some popcorn or go to mini golf or put gas in your car? Like, the things true. you have. How much did this fine brand of of mermaid thing cost? Mm-hmm. Hey, like, cost six thirty five because I'm I'm a bougie person. My gosh. Uh, <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? You drink five of these a week, it's over 30 bucks. Yeah. So you it drink is. that five of them every month. It's, I, my voice is down. It's, it's 100, I can't do math. $120 a month. You would drink this every weekday for a month, around $120. So if millennials would just stop buying coffee and avocado toast, they could support the game industry. Oh my God, I think I that's did, what we figured I out. I did just make that reference. I think that's what we just I got did to just do. say that. <laughs> <laughs> We've done it. We solved it. We solved it. Give us something else. Give us some economics. Did I just become Republican? 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, but no, the thing, like, when you consider it, it's different, right? When people say, oh, stop drinking your, your things and you'll be able to afford a house. That's crazy. Yeah. But this is a luxury item. This is a luxury item. So make your choices. Stop drinking this. Buy a different luxury item, right? The, the problem in the industry has been for years. People have been given the expectations that I deserve this and this and this and this and this and this and, this and it should be all fifty dollars. And that's the right. issue, right? That's that's not a realistic well, but thing. But David, it's just cardboard and plastic. How much could it possibly cost? We're talking fifteen cents worth of plastic, right? I'm taking up. We're designing a game right now, and the artwork alone cost me eighty eight hundred dollars. Yeah, there's a ton of costs that go into $1. game design. For a game that I'm designing, well, I'm not designing, it's like game, a, per, uh, a person design that we're publishing, that we've made the artwork, it's going to be a $40 game. The artwork alone is $9,000. So work that out. $40 game, you paid 8800 So you got to sell what? How many copies of that? Do the math at home. It's fun and interactive. It's 220. 220. Okay, good. So you got to sell 220 <laughs> So you do a print run of 2,200, or 2,200, 2,000 units. You got to sell 11% of them to cover the cost of the artwork. Mm -hmm. Just the artwork. And that's before you factor in the cost of the box because paper has gone expensive, right? Even the cost of a box, this box probably used to cost five to eight cents, maybe 12 cents. Now it's probably 50, right? Yeah. Cost of the insides, cost of the plastic, cost of the shipping, cost of manufacturing. The like, assembly. The cost of it, if it lands in Atlanta and sits in a rail yard for a day, it's $1,000. So. <laughs> Yo, be re people need to be realistic. I don't know what the original question was, but that's what it's turned into. <laughs> well, that's uh, what the rambles are. We just kind of, <laughs> until we cut off when the battery dies or something, uh, we well, just keep all going. I, all I uh, I've been called an Irish Republican. Imagine no, that. No, sir. Well, <laughs> I am from the Republic, and I am Irish, but I am not a Republican, let me tell you. Uh, I don't murder people dealing arms or still drugs. Uh, <laughs> I, it's a different kind But yeah, I'm loving this ramble. Republican is a different thing in Ireland than it is mm -hmm. here. Uh, <laughs> no, <Yeah. laughs> not really. Uh, We're not offending you. You're but yeah, not watching. No, like Dan, Dan says, it's, it's, it is the reality. Like these days, this is kind of. Um, it's just basic. Kind of, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to stop hitting the table because I'm pretty sure I'm causing <laughs> a lot of noise. I don't know how much of that is bleeding. It should. It has some suppression on, but yeah, like if you yeah. don't punch it directly, it should be okay. <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah, well, and the, the price thing, uh, I think Jen said something about, like, you'll spend hundreds of dollars on a piece of cardboard if it's a game you're interested in and it looks fun. Yeah, exactly. Like, I've spent a lot of money on it's games It's how many like. times you're going to play it, how much time you're going to reuse it. I mean, people just need to be realistic in, in the factors, um, you know. But it's, it's just good. It's just good to have. I think that's the big thing is when people see these games <laughs> being $100 and it, it does feel bad. And I, as a gamer, yeah, I see that. Well, the, if it's a bad game. Game. Well, that's true. That that's different. If you buy a game and it's bad and you've spent that much money, but, but even it, I don't feel like the hundred dollar thing is is as prevalent. Like you look, at it, there is a lot of backlash that's coming in for it because of these games costing a lot now. But again, the backlash is how much you're getting, how much you're shipping. Like you look at the recent Simon one for Zombicide, and I think they said shipping was going to be like four hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. some, some outrageous amount of shipping. But the thing is, it's not outrageous. The shipping they're charging is not outrageous. It's, that's the real ideal in shipping. It's a pretty real price for shipping and fulfillment fees, right? That's the thing people are, oh, again, like you want to ship for me, you're going to have to pay me, right? You're not, it's not just $20 to ship an item, it's $20 plus my fee. Mm -hmm. So, like, whoever that company is with, they had, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of fulfillment companies who know they had, uh, let's just say, a monopoly yes. <laughs> in, the, in the fulfillment due to lack of knowledge and they're able to charge whatever they feel like. So, there is those, those alleviated prices. So, when I said it earlier, I said the only thing that's going to drop a price of a game and drop a price of is an external factor. Take that example, right? right? For years, there was only three, four major hobby industry fulfillment companies, and they could charge whatever they want. Then a new company comes in. I don't know. Let's call them... Uh, like something uh, like a water, maybe? Yeah, like yeah. water traversal. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, You know, like... Uh, a bus that couldn't bus. go under 50. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, a company this, that might yeah. wear orange and black, We're but they come in bridge. and they offer they offer more real pricing, right? And that will should force the industry to, to normalize a bit. But will it ever go down? Because beforehand they were charging probably you know companies when they try to gain market share they undercut. We we don't do that. I'm talking about us. We 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 do yeah. charge a reasonable rate because we want to stay in business, we want to grow, we want to grow in the industry. 
and we're more realistic about it, right? So, what I think we've this is a, a classic David rant, but the <laughs> don't discount your stuff because that actually devalues your product. It does. It doesn't. It does. And this isn't talking about like a weekend sale, ten percent off the Batman game or something on the weekend. Like that's not the same thing as like a constant discount of your product. Because if you get customers a used to buying it at that price, you're never going to be able to get the price point back up to where it's profitable. Yeah, and it's the same thing again. Like you release another game and you go, "Oh, this game's a hundred dollars," and the person goes, "But well, he sold usually sells them a discount. What makes this one hundred dollars? It's not worth that." You know what I mean? It's it's that yeah. kind of idea. Is like, yeah, discount gets you up front and you're helping the players, but they don't care. <laughs> they don't. Want to. They don't well, care. And if you think about like, okay, let's take a hundred dollar board game for five people, right? So if you play that for an evening with five people, twenty bucks a person, okay. Mm -hmm. And if you spent six hours on that game, let's do five because that's easier math. So like, the, we're all about easy math here. <laughs> yes, please. The <laughs> amount of of value you get out of that versus a movie ticket that may you may accidentally go see the last Thor movie and then go that wasn't really <sighs> worth the eighteen dollars or whatever. So glad I waited till that was on Disney Plus. Ah. Uh, yeah. I'm uh, sorry, I'm not being a <laughs> hater. Uh, it's, it's not very good. Sorry. Doctor Strange yeah. was great, though. Doctor Strange We're late because we didn't get to talk Doctor about Strange. Can we talk about how yeah. great Doctor, Doctor Strange, Strange was? Great. Doctor, yeah, Strange Doctor Strange was great. Strange was great. I love Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange was great. I'm going to try Rings of Power is amazing. It is so good, and it's my authentic Tolkien so lore, good. and I will hear nothing else about it. Nothing at all. It's 100% accurate. I mean, it. <laughs> I'm waiting right now. All right, I'm I'll, going through the wall. Gotta, you're gonna finish yours because I, I will happily rant for ages about about Tolkien. It is accurate because literally nothing is known. So what, this is the first thing ever really written that makes it accurate. Okay, yeah. it's not based off the Silmarillion. It's not based off Lord of the Rings. It's a little bitty, little bitty appendix. It's, it's like a fan fiction. And the things that are happening in the story happen. Yeah, Gladiator was a badass when she was back in the Second Age. That's that's really she's the one little descriptor of her being a. Fiery, youth yeah, fiery youth. Something fiery. In that's the description. Youth. So whatever happens, that's what's going to be. Now. <laughs> you I, can uh, hate it if you want, but it's true. I just really like the fact that someone, someone had to. There was a day at Amazon where someone's like, "Hey, Johnson, did you get the rights to uh, Lord of the Rings?" And the, the guy's like, "Yes, the appendix, just that's the great. appendix." You can do what you want with it. <laughs> that's, I, love I like it, again, but I understand. Again, in my fired. Age of Empire two youth of fourteen fifteen, I also read the Silmarillion, and I love the Silmarillion. I do, a, I do a lot of work to get that on TV. I mean, it's an incredible story. It's also like a textbook. It's just recounting uh, stuff. That yeah, happens. but yeah. I mean, and then that's pretty much all. All the appendix is like in this day, this happened. In this day, our Farazan decided to sail into the west to, yeah, you know, and then got turned to stone or something like that. On remember. this day, like, this this, this king died, and then his son took over on this thing. Yeah, and then so do what you want. And yeah, so it, make it a fun story. I won't say I didn't squee when like. Uh, you find that the captain was in Lando. I was like, ah! All right, so I haven't seen the one that came out today, so no spoilers oh, for the one, one today. Because no, obviously we don't know. I have to ask you a question. Who do you think the man that fell from the sky is? It's not Gandalf. Well, yeah, it's not Gandalf. That's the only thing that would annoy me. The di that's what I saw, that's and I thought, oh, please don't. the only thing that would annoy me if they were like, yes, it's Gandalf. Like, well, he doesn't arrive from the third age, him and the other four wizards. Uh, yeah, and that would feel too much like, well, we got to have another name you know in this kind of thing. Like, oh, you'll recognize Gandalf. But How many more days you got? Yeah, like Celebrimbor, Elrond, Galadriel. Uh, of the, hold on. The, like, the down normal to the fact, people know. Dan. Down to the fact. <laughs> the normal like, people know. Galadriel's, Galadriel's brother, Finrod, is in the very first episode, and he's like a major-ish character in, in the Meridian. So for people that had dates to prom, there's Galadriel, and there's the one that was Agent Smith, which is Elrond. <laughs> and those are what I think people oh, probably... Like little Nizzledor. For the people that had dates to their high school prom... <laughs> What I'm saying is... Literally, that, Isildur is like one of the main... Yeah, like, I get story it. And people. the sword. And, yeah. And I, Bane and I, could jazz. I could just see them going, well, crap, we don't know if it's going to do well enough. Let's just insert two episodes of Mandalorian in here. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully... It'd be pretty funny if Baby Yoda just appeared in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's, gro it's an orc. <laughs> it's Grogu. Who just stabs Baby Yoda. It's not Goblin, but I don't think there is... Oh, there's goblins. Yeah, there's goblins. There's goblins. Yeah. Well, there's don't goblins. you forgot the, that the cinematic the opus of the Hobbit with oh, the I Goblin say, King yeah. and down, down, down in Goblin Town. I didn't think I, 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 I blacked it. I blacked it out. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Hobbit. So I, I, I watched the first one. I've seen all of them, but they, the last two just sort of formed into one movie in my head. Like, mm. uh, the, and it's mostly just small. Ooh, Tom Bombadil, Jensen. No, I think Tom Bombadil is older than the forest stuff, isn't he? Pretty sure Tom Bombadil is older than Boris. Wasn't he just the self-insert of Tolkien kind of Bombadil? Yeah. Yeah. No. 
Yeah, it's like that time Stephen King killed a kid in his own car or in his own book. Is that a thing? <laughs> I just heard so left. Yeah, but Dark Tower. Oh, Dark Tower I've never series. read the Dark Tower series. Dark no. Tower series is amazing. Uh, in <laughs> spoilers, in one story, one of his companions is a young kid who he gets killed in the first book. Spoilers. The books came out like forty years ago. Yeah. Know. Uh, kills a kid in the first but there's other universes so he finds a kid in another universe saves him and at one point the kid gets run over by Stephen King interesting and like just dead just uh, <laughs> he's like I can do anything when I write <laughs> yeah with from, I believe if you've ever read it he thinks he can oh my gosh yes or no I read it and that yeah, there, was a, there was a left turn in that book <laughs> that you, oh, well it's, it's not entirely uh, yeah, yeah. yeah it's not entirely the color purple but it hits you <laughs> It hits you in the surprise spot. So, uh, fun game stuff. Rad- Radagast, I don't know if you spelled that right either. I don't no, know. No, Radagast is one of the five wizards. So there's Saruman, Sar- uh, Sar- 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 Saruman, Gandalf, Radagast, and the two blue wizards who are unnamed are all sent in the third age. And so, yeah, so either this is Sar- Sauron? Like Saruman? a physical Sar- form no. for him? No, it's not because... No, it's not Sauron. No, it's not Sauron. Well, okay. Sauron then who is it? disguised as an elf at that point. Maybe it's an all new, fully new, created character. I don't know, man. Hey, everyone at home, uh, my co pilots do not understand yes ending conversations very well. <laughs> Ask a question. No. No, that's not right. Uh, excuse me. Uh, actually, he's disguised as an. Or, I, I, get him the camera here. Excuse me. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just making the show go, man. I read Lord of the Rings once in high school. That, that's really? literally been it. Yeah, oh I liked God. it, but I never. To, I'm time to reread it. Again. I never needed to. I'm more of a Hitchhiker's Guide, if I'm, but that's the one I reread every year. What? How? Don't you? Don't you? Okay. Not on, not on Douglas Adams. It's sir. Okay, like uh, you know, it's okay. It's uh, okay. Well, we can all have different opinions. Yeah, as long as they're mine. Yes, as long as they're correct. <laughs> Uh, what else? We got a bunch of comments. Yeah, but it's, it's a, people thank, are, you, thank you for your engagement. Please post yes. your comments and questions. If you want to know more about the industry as well, for like maybe even not this week, something I could actually do some research on. Yeah, make sure to post it so I know. In fact, we should say that we're going to do this weekly. Uh, we'll have various guests. We'll have pre-recorded stuff coming on. We're going to do a bunch of stuff with <laughs> us. <laughs> See, Calvin says we're talking Tolkien. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. it's talking. Yeah. This Tolkien I talk. Just bought, I bought the Atlas of Middle Earth. Ooh, it just arrived. So it's all like you know, because the one thing it's. Interest me. I think that the the internet needs more white guys talking about Tolkien. I don't think there's enough of that right now. And I really think that the male opinion of Tolkien is one that we just haven't heard. <laughs> Cut. Right. <laughs> and here's about She-Hulk. Now let me. T- Actually, I love She-Hulk. It's great. I, I I've genuinely liked it. I'm gonna make people angry. The episode I I don't know, I think it was the third one. Whichever one they twerked, and it's got to do with twerking. I did not like that episode. Oh, yeah. I just thought it was a bunch of scenes. Yeah, the, there's I, a scene. There's the next scene. They didn't really connect, so maybe it will all connect at the end. But I don't know. I uh, didn't. I like the first two. Haven't seen any since. Oh, I like the first two. The, the there's one, like, one uh, with with Donnie Blaze, the magician. It's not the most recent one, one, but yeah. it's the second most. And I did not realize this. The actor that plays his lawyer is 104 years old. He's the oldest actor on screen. I think. It like, like um, it's really cool. And you wouldn't know it. He doesn't look a day over 100. Dick Van Dyke. No. Oh. He can't unfreeze him for a cameo. And Wait, is he dead? Uh, is he? I think he's dead. No, Dick he's Van Dyke, like, are you he's, dead? He's not dead. That's what I mean. He's like a hundred and something. Well, then he's probably he's still from, he, They just put him in the little thing, you know. I was remember where like Dick Van Dyke out. in Mary Poppins is wearing an old man suit and he gets up and dances. He's only ninety six. Oh, he's only ninety six. Only ninety six. Oh. Hey, beat the queen. Oh. Hey. So I didn't know if I could make a queen. <laughs> <on this show. laughs> uh, you're good. I've been, I've been She's holding back. She's a nice back. lady. Oh, let me just let me just let me just add in. I'm not British. Yes. Just so you're aware, I don't need consultants. Thanks. Uh. <laughs> How are you holding up in this dark? All time? of those known Moraine had moved down before. All of those known Moraine. All of those known. Moraine. Industry talk. Why does GW hate my store? Dan Wolf Games asks. Ah, uh, don't worry, Dan. They hate everybody's store because right. I just got a nasty email from him today. Again. Oh no. Yeah, there's somebody out to get the store, and they. they we have all we had all our listings. This is this is going to say it right now. We had our listings created and unpublished, ready to publish tomorrow. And someone somehow digged into our website, found our listings, posted them, sent them to Games Workshop, and said, "Oh, these guys were selling early." I was like, "No, we're not. It's yeah, if they're tomorrow. unpublished, then you can't yeah. buy them." So, I know how that works. Uh, yeah, because I run the other web store. <laughs> well, that's silly. Alex, very sorry for my loss. It's okay. 
Oh. All right, well, we yeah, almost we'll... won. It was 4-3 in the end. Oh, wait, you're not talking about my soccer. Uh, oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Emily's joined. So that's it, everybody. Thanks a lot for showing up. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to wait for somebody to be like, hey, come in 10 minutes late. And be like, good night. That was the show. Yeah. That's it. That's it. But we are going to do this every week. Uh, and we're going to have, like I said, guests and things like that. And we want to know what you want to know. Because it's not just the stuff anymore from Gigabytes, although we're going to have stuff from Gigabytes. But also industry questions. Now we get to round. Know. Now we get to round about the wider industry. Yeah, talk yeah. about uh, if you have questions about Kickstarters and how to run them, we can certainly talk to you about what not to do. So <laughs> we're very knowledgeable about what not to do. <laughs> so, well, eventually, if you learn all the no's, you you only have the yeses left over. I think uh, uh, right? uh, what's his name? Who who was who was the guy? Who said that he was James Bond. Confucius. What? No. But she can only say no so much? 50 notion, yes. 50 oh, yes. notion, yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, Sean Connery. Oh, God. We've... Speaking of a League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Speaking of leagues. It leagues. all comes it all back to squats. Full circle. Coming back to full doing squats. Oh. <laughs> oh, Emily has a grumpy, angry face. We're yeah. not really leaving. I mean, we, we might be winding down, but... Uh, <laughs> we're running out, of, running out of energy. Right, yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh man, shows in no, yeah, but I want to talk. I'm gonna talk more. You know, we always talked about it a little bit when we were at Giga doing rambles, but now that we're here, uh, it'll be all just things that annoy me, pressure in my mind. Uh, so we're ready to go. But exciting stuff for Bridge. Bridge is really getting excited. Yeah, expansion on the horizons. Multiple. I don't think I'm allowed to talk about some of the stuff yet. I'm I don't not think sure. You can either. Um, what can we talk about with the Bridge stuff? Uh, we have Cubicle Seven. That yeah, is, that's a really big that. one. Yeah, we can um, talk about things that are listed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going Things we're selling back. we can probably talk about. I can talk about. So, yeah, yeah. we have Cubicle 7. We have all of the, uh, that's have, Soulbound, Wrath yeah. and Fury. We have this. Uh, we have this. Um, oh. Uh, hidden Leaders. We, we, we stopped uh, Hidden Leaders now. Ha <laughs> ha. Off screen. We also, uh, Soulbound has the new Doctor Who. Soulbound uh, has Doctor Who. Not Soulbound. Who. <laughs> Cubicle 7. <laughs> Now with Age of Sigmar, he's a wizard. <laughs> this was... is who appears in the, in Rings of Power. That's what it's it was. Doctor it was the who. Doctor. Yeah, it fell. Yeah, finally, I'm gonna combine all of my Tumblr fanfics into one place, and then Sonic the Hedgehog shows up with Shadow. You see, with like, it's really important. Ugly Sonic you... with the teeth. But <laughs> it's the one from the movie. It's the first generation. You know, Sonic. he's in the the Chip and Dale movie. Yeah, Ugly Sonic. Ugly yeah, Bear I like that he's now his own thing. So we can have him. Chip and Dale movie's not bad, except it's a little bit too long. Will there be a future where we have a Sonic movie where they bring back the old CG version in a scene where he has to fight all of his villains? Will uh, they ever? Buffalo, uh, where was, there was no way home. I was Sonic? Buffalo Rock. I don't know who Buffalo Rock is, so you have to clarify that one for me. Uh, um, I was just thinking, are you talking about a Sonic multiverse? Yes, oh the Sonic multiverse. The Sonic verse. We need. We need to start building our. It's where own. he. It's where he got to go fast so much. He split the, the time. He, he, I think that's Flashpoint. Uh, <laughs> I think that existed. Well, <laughs> there right. you go. It's when like Sonic said, went back no, to prevent his mom no, from being There's no original, no original thought anymore, so yeah. coming soon to a table near you, Cabin in the Woods, the board game. <laughs> <laughs> Featuring Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog. Just all the IPs into one thing. That's the uh, Cabin in the Woods was all the IPs. That's, yeah, it kind yeah. of is, yep. Uh, have you guys seen the Cowboy Bebop RPG on Kickstarter? I have not. Um, but that looks cool. I would, I'd like to check that out. Wasn't that, wasn't that an old Kickstarter? I think I backed that. Maybe you have. Back maybe back. We'll, I retail back a lot. Maybe we'll be getting it. We don't know. Sometimes oh, stuff shows up. RPG. I know there's a board game. Uh, let's see. Chip movies in the mail. I didn't expect to be so good. I mean, it's just, it's good. It's just a bit long. Uh, I, I just, it exceeded my expectations, which were super low <laughs> for that movie. When, when, when you have no expectations. Anymore. Yeah. And I was like, huh, I chuckled a bunch. Okay. Yeah, I learned that hard lesson when I started watching like Kenobi and stuff. I was like, oh, this will be great. Oh, so bad. So bad. You Moon didn't Knight. like Kenobi, but you liked Moon Knight. Knight. Moon Knight. Moon Knight was good. Oh, that last episode just. I, lost I, see, me. I never watched it. I uh, don't. Because that, that was like, Moon Knight was good. I just didn't care. Enough let to keep let me watching. tell you my version of the last episode, and it will be better than <laughs> Zach what the is last now episode going to tell was. you his truth. Actually, we need a slide that like just pulls over the screen and just goes. Now it's time for Zach's truth. Yeah, can I? I'm like a toss to camera B, which is like close up on me, and I can be like, so here's how Moon Knight should have ended. <laughs> here's how a guy who's literally never published anything can rewrite a multi million dollar franchise by much smarter people than myself. That's just having opinions on the internet, I think. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought you were talking about the fact that we were. No, that's what we're doing right now. Kickstarters. Oh, no, that's being truthful. 
God. Uh, Calvin says David backing so many Kickstarters, they all blur together. It's a brand and a mood. It is true. It's a mood. It Emily, is true. Listen, I have Moon Knight number one on my wall. Uh, I wanted to love it so much, and I loved so much of it. I loved parts of it so much, but my God, the running down the pyramid CGI fight thing at the end was terrible, and it took me right, right out of it. It, it just had real, it went so, to a I mean, sky beam. It went to a sky beam because it's a Marvel thing, and I was like, no, don't. It's, it's no Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso is really good. Actually, once in though, the MCU there's, extended there's, universe, what was the name of it? There's something that was like Tiny started watching, and so of course I started watching it. It was on Netflix, like Partners or something. Basically, it's three twenty somethings are trying to become partners in a law firm in New York. It's on Netflix. It's based on uh, a women's book. I've heard of that. Really good. I can't remember the name of it though. It's Partners something. Watch it. It's on Netflix. It's great. Check it out. <laughs> I don't know why the actors sponsoring this. They're all like no, they're all like um, they're, they're all newer, younger actors. Like it's it's an Asian lady and then uh, people. Does it feel uh, weird uh, that there's actors now that are in movies and you look at them and you're like, look at this kid? And I'm like, old now. Oh no, I don't know who these people are. Well, I wake up in the morning and I look at how far my hairline has receded. Then I curse the youth of today and I like you know. I, I'm glad that at least mine has stayed with the Vegeta hair. So oh, the partner track. Jen people. knows. Of course you know, Jen. You would know. The partner uh, track. Thank you. She's probably Google it. That was a good show. Uh, I like that show. It's the second season already coming, I think. Is Marvel getting lazy with their CG? Uh, yeah. I, I do love She-Hulk, but there are some goofy... The hair physics in She-Hulk throw me off. They're cheap with their CG. Because I think, was it Thor? It was just bad CG. In yeah, Thor, the whole movie in Thor looked like they didn't... Like, yeah. it needed one more pass. Yeah. Like, it didn't get the whole Yeah, thing. like, when they first brought the skip, the executive should have been like, pass! That's what they needed. <laughs> <laughs> they should have been... I, I want to see whatever movie Christian Bale was in. <laughs> yes. Because that seemed like he was having a real good time. I really loved the part when he's sitting in the cage. Spoilers. Uh, oh, the sitting kids. in the cage, and he has, like, this is a fluffy... <laughs> He's like, what? what? What is this madness? He, he became like a little bit of Heath Ledger in some of those scenes. I noticed. But he was like, what? You don't like comedy? It's a little bit like Mark Hamill Ledger Joker in his, in his so Joker, action. Joker the Batman? Yeah. Yeah, you start with the Batman, you yeah. come to Joker. Hey, he just was like, you know what? I'm going to do what that guy did. Yeah. It worked. I, don't, I think he's more atheist fail in this movie, to be honest. The thing is, and it's funny, it's a big thing, and I, and I think <laughs> Honest Trailers did it. It's like, here's another great actor in a throwaway role of villains who are actually in the right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I hit all gods to do nothing. It's like, yeah, I can't really argue with that. The whole movie then explains how the gods do nothing. <laughs> Except, you're like, yeah. Oh, it's hard to not get behind them. <laughs> That's why the, the comic like, one. To be honest with you, sometimes it's hard not to get behind Thanos. You watch some of the movies, you're like, yeah, maybe half the universe does need to go. Yeah. Also, why wouldn't you just be like... God, did I just become twice super Republican just there? <laughs> I just don't understand why Thanos isn't just like, no one ever has to eat again. Boom, now no one starts. Because the will disappear. But that, no, genie. you gotta... Okay, don't monkey's paw it like the Scarlet <laughs> Witch. You gotta... <laughs> I'm glad I was... Listen, they put Black Bolt up. That was mind-blowing, and I was happy for it. Yes, that was cool. Uh, I have not seen House of the Dragon show. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to House of the Dragon. I loved Game of Thrones. I even liked the last season, honestly. I enjoyed it. I even liked the last season. I thought it was cool watching he uh, Henry Strickland and all, or Harry Harry Strickland just get annihilated from behind without ever expecting it. Like, that was just... It made me feel good. I don't care enough to watch House of the Dragons. I I, I've watched 20 minutes of the first episode, and then I turned it off for some reason. I just don't care to go back to it. I'm going to watch it, but I'm going to pretend this is a really broken iteration of the Doctor. I hear it's great. Like, I mean, that's, maybe, that's the way I'm, I'm thinking, internalizing maybe I, need to, maybe I need to give it another chance, right? Because I keep hearing Matt Smith's amazing. And I mean, it's Matt Smith, so... I yeah. mean, he was in Terminator Genesis. Like that's like his magnum, <laughs> that's like his magnum opus. Is that, right? Is that his uh, when they're like best known as <laughs> best known as Terminator uh, as, Genesis as, as Skynet's personification Car in Genesis? Carl Genesis. Urban, best known from Doom. <laughs> uh, first off, Dread. Uh, that's the joke. Clearly, Doom is where he got his start. Star Trek. Thor wrapping I, it back so around. So, like, straight up, like, straight man, I would have never referenced Carl Urban as Star Trek. Like, I would have thought Doom and Dread would be two pretty evenly not... But Dread was really good. Doom was really good! <laughs> the first I, person shooter scene? Oh, God, that movie's great. sick. <laughs> this movie's only bettered by, I don't know, like, fucking Daredevil, 2003. Hey! hey! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
was, oh, oh, we got the oh, full screen. Full uh, well, that's what we're doing after we wrap the show up. So should we go ahead and uh, wind down because we've got our <laughs> plans for the day? My hot take, J.R.R. Martin is overrated. I mean, mm, you know, he's a, it's a good book, except book four or five. Whichever book where they stop following the main characters and they follow the secondary characters in uh, Game of Thrones. Or, sorry, Song of Ice and Fire. Uh, that book is boring. But the other ones were actually really good. I've never read any of the books. Oh, my God. I did like the show, though. That was my quarantine show. I put it on. I painted 120 bone splitters while watching the whole thing. And it's a great painting show because when the character <laughs> came up, I didn't care about Calvin it. Just asked, did Zach just have a copy of Doom sitting around hoping there was an appropriate bit? <laughs> yes. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of random crap yeah. that sits around here hoping for an appropriate bit. Let me just say. How dare you. Good in two t- oh, Pull God, the veil back Cara on the Urban magic. Was, Cara Urban was in Two Towers. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's been in a lot of stuff, yeah. like, just uh, as a guy. I just know him as the boy now. Like, uh, as what's his name? Uh, Billy, Billy Butcher. Butcher. Yeah. yeah. It's funny that neither of us went there when we were talking about it. Boys Best movie. known as from Doom, where Best he played uh, a mercenary. They don't even tell you the character names in the back. That's the person doing putting this together was like, yeah, this is not. No one's gonna look at this the and then go. Let me read about the plot. The only thing Doom always confused me was just the Rock's character shift. It's like they're going to the movie. It's like, oh wow, you know, what we never did this. We never made like a human bad guy because you always gotta have a human. Like you know, you gotta have your um, um, your Burke, right? Yeah. I never think Burke. of douchebag humans. I think of Burke from Aliens. And mad about you. It's the same character, right? Just before same. he went to space. Yeah, that's why he went to space. <laughs> yeah. That's why they ended the show. He just never came back. He that's mad. why he was so He was mad. mad about you, left. He lost Helen Hunt, and then he had to go into space. Okay. Anyway, that joke dated a lot of people she out of this was, podcast. Uh, Helen Hunt had to leave, so she could go like, voice the Cars characters. Yeah. Did you know she's she's the voice of his girlfriend in Cars? No, I did not know that. Yeah, she's like 60. It's really weird watching Cars. There's a new Cars TV show. I have a kid, so I watch Disney Plus. Also, I am a human being with feelings and emotions, and I like Disney. That's okay. <laughs> uh, it's, it's to, right. to, it's like, listen, space. To, listen to the voices <laughs> of the cars, and they're all. And then you look look up the actors, and they're all in their fifties and sixties. Like, oh. first Cars came out sixteen years ago. How old do you feel? So the first Cars movie has its license. <laughs> Interesting. If yeah, that whole yeah. Be yeah, if that whole world wasn't just. Well, you guys talk about that. And th- what's on October 8th? The 15th anniversary of Gigabytes. The 15th anniversary of Gigabytes. Oh, God. Yeah, we should actually talk about Gigabytes' 15th anniversary this year. Yeah. It also, 15. I don't know. It can also get your license in Alabama for marriage. Well, you can get your learners. Uh, <laughs> oh, for marriage. You get your learners for marriage. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to practice the marriage. I don't know learn, if it's going to work out. learners. Yeah, marriage uh, licenses in Alabama. They're just like, yeah, off you go. Yeah. 15, though. That's I've drove to Alabama like twice. Your, your Alabama accent was not <laughs> what I thought it was. It's like a bullfrog. <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> Scooby-Doo now. But yeah, 15th anniversary gigabytes this year, October 8th. We're going to have a party. It's going to be at the Bouncy Castle. There's some live music. Uh, oh? It's gonna be ga- yeah, we're going to have live music. We're going to have games. We're going to have giveaways. We're going to have prizes. We're going to have things to sell you. You're going to have money to give me. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a festival. Sounds like a festival. No, it's gonna be fun. I think we're, I don't. Uh, are we doing an outside market? I'm not sure. Yeah. 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 I think we are. I would. Would you like us to do an outside market? I'm quite That's sure I heard that. Yeah. Flip and throw that. Uh, will we hastily assemble any sort of like carnival rides in a Kmart parking lot for this? I uh, mean, only if they're rickety. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. That's we're not a, having an animal farm. Oh. Oh, <laughs> what am I gonna do with my human zit impression? <laughs> I was hoping to go there. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking for Justin to laugh but at that because he's the only person. I probably a food truck. I'm really excited about the music because it's the guy uh, from Bop to Rock that did my son's birthday party, and he was incredible. Like, I was standing outside going, yeah. So but it's not to... just p- listen, birthday party listen, for... Listen, his, his rendition of Wheels on a Bus just slaps. I was about to ask, is this just going to be children's entertainment birthday party music? <laughs> I'm just going to have to clown, clown, clown <laughs> Let's hear what they say. I'm gonna have to clown makeup where like you do the thing and then you just go down, <laughs> just, just that, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you? You know, like you know, like uh, the Courtney Love version. <laughs> ah, heroin chic. <laughs> I'm just imagining just the DJ being like, "Are you guys ready for the drop?" Oh my god! The cow goes. It boom. is our quinceanera. Oh, nobody better come with me with like uh, requests that day then. Oh yeah. Also, Alec is responding uh, on the clock. I'm sorry, Calvin. I'm gonna use that. Non-stop on that. Yeah, thing. thanks. Actually, maybe Calvin. I'm just gonna go in wearing a cravat. 
comes back. You come to me. In the day of my stores, quinceanera. This is what I'm going to have for the next couple of weeks. Oh, yes. yeah. So, there you go. Nice. Uh, hey, if you're interested in being an artist vendor in the vendor artist market thing, uh, hit Emily up. Uh, she's the one with the capital letters. So I guess in we the are. Comments. Oh, because she's telling me yes, we are. Cool. David just wants our money. Our love is a bonus. Yeah, well, I'm trying to love too. Yeah. There's at least I'm open about. It. <laughs> you know. Sorry. I mean, if there's no <laughs> money, there's no us, and then there's none of this, and then you don't have any of this, and then the whole system kind of falls apart. And you might, you know, have spent your time better. I don't. Know. Yeah. Well, you might be making. S- Smart financial yeah. investments? Yeah. I don't know. Give me $100 of Batman minis. I need to <laughs> I need to paint this weekend. Uh, What's insurance? Some main, main uh, life, some, mainline some uh, Batman. You uh, can't. The amount of cleaning those yeah. model sticks? Yeah. That's true. Anyway, I don't know what else we got to talk about. I think that's it. I think we've pretty much wrapped it up. We've we're done good, a, We're a good show. at multitasking here in the warehouse. It's, it's incredible how many warehouse employees are watching this right now. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. almost like they, they know where we are and they can hear us. Do you think they're standing right outside the door right so now? So why? Maybe we should like finish. Maybe what? What do you want the rambles to be actually? Because we didn't script this or plan this or do anything at all. In pure, I don't think Zach, they knew that. Zach until and David you said uh, that out loud. Just like our last Kickstarter. Oh. But yeah, let us know <laughs> what kind of what kind of stuff you want to see. Uh, if you want to see interviews with industry people, like actual game publishers and things That's like that, I can put that kind of stuff. Well, I can put that okay. stuff. Too. Let me use my associates in journalism. I literally something. walked in here All right. two minutes from my trailer, which is also the bathroom. Yeah. Uh, in here in like two minutes. I have I have some news have about that shade, trailer. I have we, my shades on. Uh, we've been abusing that trailer God. a lot. It is not uh, a safe space at this point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want it to be what this. Hey, thank you. Good, thanks. But yeah, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking we might do like a, a, an update. Of what's going on? At Gigabytes and Bridge at the end. So Gigabytes next week. We've got events almost every weekend. I know that there's a 40k tournament next weekend. I should probably look up what the events are. Yeah. I know there's a Middle Earth fantasy strategy battle league fantasy fight, whatever they call that game. Mm-hmm. No, keep uh, going. This Saturday. <laughs> this Saturday. Um, and then obviously the the Quinceanera on the 8th of October Quinceanera uh, there's a Warcry League going on that meets on Sundays and Thursdays uh, if you want to check that out it's basically just open drop in and play when you want to and it's really fun we've been having a lot of new people play the system and there's a Red Mazda double parked I repeat a Red Mazda Red Mazda park. I don't know it just sounded like you were doing a thing at Bingo Hall sometimes <laughs> I do sort of sound like uh, an announcer guy by accident uh, well you got very nice guy I like it yeah. I don't know what's here for it's good I used to. My, uh, uh, used then what are we doing? A bridge. What can we talk about? A bridge that we're doing. Uh, fulfillment. Fulfillment. And we just finished. I don't know if you back '90s games. We just finished fulfilling relics of Raja. Relics of Raja Vahara. It's actually relics of Raja Vahara. Raja Vahara. Yeah, it's yeah. so hard to say. I love it. Joe Slack, the designer. It's a great game. He's a great guy. That fulfillment finished this week. We are in the middle of fulfillment of Ludus Magnus's Opus Magnus, uh, but Ludus Magnus's Divide and Impera and Dungeonology. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's a combo of fulfillment we're in the middle of doing right now. Uh, we're about to start a fulfillment on Alien Pet Shop. Uh, what else are we doing? There's another one that's arrived. There's so, so many of them. You might not even realize this, that a lot of games you play, if you're not buying them at Gigabytes, but you're backing them on Kickstarter, might still be going through our yeah, more and more hands. Hence, expansion that we can't talk about yet, but that announcement will be coming up soon. So, Bridge is really... Yeah. yeah. That's great. And uh, with we, that, we are forcing it against my best efforts, <laughs> forcing it to become something. Would that yeah. mean that Gigabytes would be a great place to get like Kickstarter exclusive stuff after fulfillment? Maybe if there's mm-hmm. overages, uh, if we're allowed to do that, it seems like a pretty yeah, good place to find those things. Yeah, a lot of stuff things. we do fulfillment and Kickstarter. We, uh, you know, we do also then offer the distribution afterwards, and so I mean, we do distribute a lot of games. Like if you look at, I'm looking to my right because there's a wall of games. I'm trying to see if anything. Cult of the Deep, for example. Cult of the Deep is absolutely amazing. Uh, if you are a retailer, talk to BA Games because they are doing a deal right now uh, where if you buy six or buy five, you get one free. I think if you buy two, you get one half price. So it's basically you buy six, get, buy five, get one free, but half. Uh, and then we will ship from our warehouse for that for you. I just had to do um, that Zach Galifin ask his math gift. Yeah, it's there. <laughs> it's ship um, by half, by third, by I'm trying to see what's on the wall. Well, I'm, I'm in the yeah. way. Downtown Chase, which is one we published. We finished a film on that recently. Now it's for mm-hmm. distribution. Really I see funny. Blue Collection. Uh, if you haven't tried the Blue Collection, it's amazing. One Card Dungeon. I just triggered the second print run. <laughs> so they're already sold out. Uh, absolutely it's fun. crazy. Yeah. Uh, another print run of McKee is coming. That's an older one, but it keeps selling. Um, what else we got? We got Tomes of Holding. We just did the fulfillment on that. We've got Tomes of Holding. for distribution now. We got a lot of videos coming out too in the next couple of weeks to show off all this kind of stuff as well. Yep. So you can check it out. 
Uh, we don't have canvas, no. Um, Road to Intrigue don't really do, I think they do their own fulfillment. Uh, which new warehouse are you buying it? I can't tell you which new warehouse I'm buying yet. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, do you all have you. a gas, a a gas sands group? There is a gas sands group. Um, I don't know when they come visit, but there is a Facebook group where you can go in and post. I know Drew and a few other people play gas sands. Yeah. All right, so uh, this is a good suggestion. Can we get some ferns in here to add to the ambiance? Uh, yes, I will properly foliage this place up. Next you time should we have should have one there, and I should have one here. Next time we should just be two trees with sure salt. <laughs> oh, uh, there is plans for, for, for there's plans not, for insanity. Not, not quite not quite the ferns, but this is about four episodes before it just goes off the rails entirely. So this is the structured part of whatever this is. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm looking at I'm just trying to see. Yeah, no, Alien, Alien Pet Shop looks great. Old Crossing Games, really nice guys. I'm trying to think what else. There's, there's definitely more. Uh, we will be doing the fulfillment for Boogeyman. We will be doing the fulfillment for Draw Labs, new uh, Kickstarter. We will be doing the fulfillment for... Skinny Minis. Uh, Shogun new Katana. I don't think I got that right. Something like that. It's post Krypton's game. We're doing the fulfillment for... God, there's such a long list. It's a very fulfilling list. Mint. List mint? <laughs> list mint. That sounds delicious. I need one after this coffee. Uh, yes, he does. So, <laughs> that's why I've just been putting the straight black tar heroin. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. No, so we got a lot going on. Yeah. I'm sure we'll so have more next week. Let us know what you guys want to see from the show and from us and other things and... Would you like to have audio available as a podcast of these things? We could do that for you. Basically, just let us know how we can uh, make this show entertaining for you in either an informative or a dumpster fire way. And we'll go towards the dumpster, but we'll try to stay in the informative, I think. Yes. yes. I, know, I was a bit informed, I feel like. Yeah. I think we, we said some words that made sense. Yeah. I ranted a bit. All right. Well, it looks like we're ready to get out of here. I actually have to go do work. <laughs> oh yeah, let's go do some work. So uh, thanks for watching us, everybody, and we will catch you later. Bye.